everyone and welcome to this, our first, uh, our first recorded worship experience that we have decided to produce in lieu of canceling our worship services. Because we value so highly the health and well-being of all people, we made the decision to cancel our worship services on Wednesday nights during Lent and on Sunday mornings. And so in, in place of that, we're going to provide these recordings of worship experiences for you. We'll begin today's worship uh, for the fourth Sunday in Lent, Sunday, March 22, uh, with a thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today comes from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John. It's a story of a man born blind to whom Jesus gives sight. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go. Wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight 
until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age, he'll speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of our Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord Christ, bend your ear to our prayers and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, much grace and peace to all of you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Joining God at work in the world. That's our mission statement here at Amazing Grace Lutheran Church. It's a mission statement that makes a couple of pretty bold claims. One claim is that ordinary folks, just like you and me, can actually take part in accomplishing the work of God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the creator of life itself. It's a pretty bold claim. It also boldly presumes that we can see where God is at work in the world. I mean, if we're going to join God in his work, we need to know where he is and what he's doing, right? Or at the very least, we need to be able to hear where God is calling us to go and what God is calling us to do, which to many people out there will sound like a very bold claim, that we can hear God speak to us. So, I ask you, 
and I'm relatively new here, so this is an honest question, is this really true? Are these claims really true? As you sit there today, practically quarantined, cloistered from the rest of the world, watching this invisible virus close in on all of us, maybe even feeling a bit isolated and separated, are these claims true? Can you see God at work somewhere? Can you hear God speaking to you? What's God saying to you? That can be kind of a daunting question, can it? Sometimes it's awfully hard to see God in this world. Just like it was for most of the folks in our reading from John today, they couldn't see God at work in the world, and he was standing right there in front of them. So Jesus, Jesus is walking down the street in Jerusalem, and he comes across this blind beggar. And the disciples, a bit blind themselves, want to know who to blame for this man's blindness, the man himself or his parents. See, they needed the answer to this question. They needed to make some kind of logical sense of this man's blindness to fend off the idea that chaos is actually loose in the world, that some things happen by forces beyond our powers of reason and beyond our control. They needed that. <laughs> Wrong question, Jesus says. This isn't about who's to blame. Instead, Jesus says, ask where God is and what he's doing in the midst of all this, in the midst of this darkness. Then he spits in the dirt, rubs mud in the blind man's eyes, and sends him to wash the blindness away. The man can see again. Which would have been a happy ending to a pretty good story. But it wasn't. This was only the beginning. The light of the world was shining, but no one could see it. The blind man's neighbors and the Pharisees didn't believe him. They were too busy keeping their nice, predictable, well-ordered world under their control. His parents didn't see the light either. Their fear of upsetting the Pharisees and getting kicked out of the church kept them blind. But the blind man, the blind man refused to not see him. The blind man refused to not see Jesus. Go ahead, he said. Call him a sinner or whatever you want. All I know is that I was blind and now I see. How can that not be the work of God? Despite all the disbelief, all the press, pressure, all the cajoling, all the threats made to him to, to, to try to keep him blind, to get him to stay blind, the man refused to not see God. Joining God at work in the world. Joining God at work in the world in times like these means refusing to not see God at work. And with the cacophony of voices out there vying for your attention, not only in times like these, but in all times, with that cacophony of voices, it also means refusing to not hear God speak. But if we're going to be the church for a world who could use us at our best, we need to be intentional about seeing and hearing God every day. A friend of mine told me a story once about a time when his son Scott was in a car accident. Scott immediately called his dad right there at the scene. He was naturally a little bit upset, a little bit disoriented. So dad calmed Scott down a bit and they talked through the whole situation. Is everyone okay? Yeah, I'm fine. So is the other driver. Did you exchange insurance information? Yep, did that. Did you call the police? Yeah. Did you call work and tell them you wouldn't be in? No, I'll do that right away though. Are you sure you're okay, Scott? 
Yeah, Dad, I'm fine. Really, I'll be fine. Well, finally, Dad calms down a bit himself and says to his son, Okay, Scott, now watch for God to show up. Scott was confused. What, what are you talking about, Dad? Right about that time, the fire department arrived. Guy jumps out of the truck and starts directing traffic around the scene. Just wait, Dad said, and see where God shows up. Then the police officer arrived to make sure everyone was okay, called in a tow truck. Oh, Scott said, I get it. Okay, Dad, God's arrived. Next, the tow truck arrived, the insurance agent called, and God was suddenly showing up everywhere. Before Scott knew it, he was driving back home in a rental car, his insurance agent helped arrange for him. And for the moment, anyway, things were restored to some sense of peace and order. Good people, God is here. It is into this very life, in this world and this time, that God enters, right into this, this strangeness and confusion and uncertainty of life. And God is here. God's here to abide and console and comfort, yes, absolutely, but also to create like he did in the very beginning, using the very darkness and chaos to create light and life in a new glorious order to create the life that God longs for us to have and that Christ died for us to have. So as we, each one of us, are sent out into this world today in the coming days and weeks and months, watch for Jesus to show up because he will. And he'll be calling us to join him. He'll be calling you to join him. Today, Jesus affirms that even amidst such dramatic change or whatever confusion and chaos you might be experiencing, he is here, creating a new life of abundant peace and light and love that is most assuredly in our future. And for that, we can say, thanks be to God. So today, and actually throughout each of these recordings, each of these worship experiences, we're going to practice watching for and listening for God in Jesus Christ in this world. And we're going to do that by taking just a little bit of time during each of these experiences to do that to watch for and listen for God. Brad is going to play some, some music, and you can use this time however you'd like. If you want to just listen to Brad play, if you want to pray, if you want to meditate, just try to be in silence and just listen. But we'll do that right now for just a minute. <laughs>
I'd like to take a moment here as well to talk about uh, an opportunity for you to give an offering to Amazing Grace Lutheran Church. Many of you have contributed regularly to Amazing Grace, and we thank you so much for your financial contributions. We thank all of you for all that you've contributed to support the ministry here, this important ministry, as we strive to live into that mission, to join God at work in the world. During this time when we're not gathering, it presents a particular challenge of collecting offerings, but there's a number of ways that you can continue to give. One is through mail. You can write a check and send it through the Postal Service. Another way to do it, I know a number of people uh, do it electronically through your bank and their online banking. You can also do it through a program called Simply Giving, and you can find more information about that on our website. So please, I invite you to take part in our mission here to support the world in a time right now uh, for a world that needs a lot of support. So thank you for all that you do. Turning our hearts now to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church and for the world and for all who are in need. Each petition I will conclude with the words, Hear us, O God. I invite you to respond with the words, Your mercy is great. Your mercy is great. We pray. Living and present God, open the eyes and ears of your church so that we might see and hear you. Shine brightly and speak clearly so that we might join you at work in the world. Be our guide, our comforter, our hope as we navigate through the uncharted territory in which we find ourselves. Hear us, O oh God. God, our peace and our strength. We pray for our nation and the world as we face new uncertainties around COVID-19. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our own families, in our congregations, our workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with open hearts to join you at work in the world. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, it is good for us to gather as your beloved in community. We treasure your presence with us in word and meal, song and prayer. Be with us in these days when gathering together as often as we would like is simply not possible. When we must be apart for reasons of safety and care for our neighbor, we trust that you surround us with your sheltering wings. Encourage us in connecting as we are able, whenever we can, however we can, reaching out to our neighbors in need and being persistent in prayer. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, bring peace to all people and nations. Call, encourage, and send leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth for all. Frustrate the efforts of those who would seek to cause confusion, clouded vision, and chaos. Hear us, O oh God. Present God, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Especially today, we pray for Mark Wall, Jan Locke, Bonnie Petrasek, Bruce Klopfleisch, Susan Young, Jan and Al Stein, S.T. Morris, Elizabeth Anderson, and for anyone or anything else that we now name out loud or in silence.
Hear us, O oh God. Living God, according to your steadfast love, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now we join together, not necessarily holding hands, but join together along with the whole church in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this blessing. Good people, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love, and in peace. Amen. Now go in peace and share this good news. <laughs>